all the updates from him just as soon as we can. But now let's move on. A Canadian rights group accuses Prime Minister Stephen Harper of fostering hatred of Aboriginal people by refusing to condemn racial practices against them. Ellen Gabrielle of the Indigenous Women of Turtle Island says there's a strong and growing amount of racist reactions against Indigenous people and the protests organised by the Idol No More movement. The Indigenous communities, also known as the First Nations, have been protesting against their poor living conditions and high unemployment rate. Recently, several First Nation chiefs met with the Premier, but they say the progress made was not enough to stall the protest campaign. Now, the Assembly of First Nations has renewed its call for a fresh meeting with Harper and Governor-General David Johnston on the 24th of January. Joshua Blakeney is our correspondent with me now live from Calgary in Canada with the latest. So Joshua, first of all, one question that a lot of people are asking now is what happened during the first round of talks between those First Nation chiefs and Prime Minister Stephen Harper and whether there is uh, any kind of hope that negotiations would resolve anything? No, there was nothing original proposed, Homer, by the Harper regime vis-a-vis -vis Canada's Aboriginal leaders that the Aboriginal leaders could hold up as having been an achievement. The kinds of things the Harper government is proposing have been proposed by Canadian governments now for decades. The Indigenous peoples of Canada want to be treated as autonomous nations. They are referred to as the First Nations in Canada for that very, re that very reason. And as uh, the people of Iran know and the people of Palestine know, the Canadian government doesn't respect the principle of self-determination. And that is indeed what Canada's First Nations people are asking for. They're asking to be able to make their own mistakes and uh, improve their own societies as they wish. And there's this kind of paternalistic uh, philosophy guiding the Harper government that if indigenous peoples or their leadership make mistakes or are corrupt, that the Harper government ought to step in and uh, reshape these societies uh, on behalf of the Aboriginal peoples. And the Aboriginal peoples of North America have gone through this since 1492 of, you know, white Europe, European uh, people of European line lineage trying to decide their fate for them. And so that Indigenous leaders in, in Idol No More want to negotiate on a nation-to-nation -nation basis, and unfortunately the Harper government is not willing to do that. Of course, this highly draconian omnibus bill, Bill C-45, uh, does away with the tradition that Canada did have of trying to respect Canadian uh, uh, treaties that have been struck historically with Canada's Indigenous peoples and allows effectively for the privatization of the Indian reserves. Now, of course, 99% of the historic territories of Canada's indigenous peoples has already been taken from them, but they do have reserves which are collectively held. And so the 1% of land that is held by indigenous peoples is now being set up for privatization. And of course, the Harper government is perceived to be in the pocket of the very resource companies that profit from the plundering of the resources that lie under Canada's uh, Canada's territory, the historic territories of Canada's indigenous peoples. And so from the perspective of Idle No More protesters, the Harper government isn't really taking their demands seriously. And that's why you see allegations being leveled of racism and, and arrogance at the Harper government, because there is a perception that, you know, the Harper government is kind of trying to reinvent European exceptionalism and colonialism. Of course, it's known that the Harper government uh, embraces uh, Zionist uh, social Darwinistic philosophy. Uh, we know that he's highly apologetic for Israel's ruthless colonialism. And of course, the Aboriginals of Canada are, in a sense, Canada, Canada's Palestinians. Mm. And, and he show, he's displaying a, a similar um, antipathy to their demands. And that's why mm. we're seeing no more movement proliferating. A country of Canada that was once loved in the world is now being protested yeah. in global cities, Tokyo, New York, Sydney, Paris, London, New Zealand, Austra Australia, all around the world. There are protests yeah. on against Canada's government, right. something but, that's unprecedented in yeah. Canada's history. Joshua, I'll have to stop you. We're a little short of time. Joshua Blakeney, our correspondent with us there, live via Skype from Calgary with the latest. Now let's get back to our first story and that is of course the hostage situation, the crisis that's taking place in Algeria. The latest reports are telling us that the fate of the hostages still remains in the balance. We still don't know even how many of those hostages are still at the hands of the hostage takers, though we do know according to the latest reports that one French citizen and an American national are among those confirmed dead and over 30 people are believed to have been killed as well. Finian Cunningham